Today's Namaste Yoga is a beginner's class. Hello and welcome to episode 117 of Namaste Yoga. Today we're going to be doing a beginner's class. And before we do that, I have a few things that I want to share with you. First is we have these fabulous new leggings from Squeezed, our clothing sponsor. So Donna has really kindly given me the only pair of these <laughs> leggings in existence right now. They're the, actually the prototype. And I wanted to show you them with... Um, leg warmers because they work really well with leg warmers if you like to wear leg warmers for your practice but I'll take them off to show them them to you because I'll, I'll do my yoga without them um, they're actually gonna have Om Mani Padme, Padme Om, Om on here Om Mani Padme Om on here which is a mantra of compassion for the Bodhisattva of compassion and it means Om the jewel of the lotus Om and um, Donna is doing a special for you right now on these. So they are going to be regular price $62 Canadian. And they are on sale right now for $45 if you pre-order them um, by February the 8th, 2012. And then you will get them for the sale price of $45. Um, and then they'll just be a four week turnaround. So the great thing about um, squeezed yoga clothing is they really stay put when you wear them. Um, and I love them because I know as yogis, we look for ethically responsible companies. And these clothes are made in Canada. They're made actually like down the road from Donna's house in Scarborough and made, manufactured, everything. Um, so it's, you know, it's, it's different than going to cheapy, cheapy places and buying pants for $8. You, you know, you know that people are pay being paid a fair wage to make these clothes. So that's important, I know, to us. Um, I also wanted to encourage you to go to my website, www.melissawest.com, and sign up for my newsletter there. When you do that, you'll receive a free morning and evening yoga sequence, not available anywhere else on the web or on YouTube or anything like that. So when you pick those up, um, you, you'll get them through the newsletter. And um, the other thing is stay on the newsletter because I do give out other freebies from time to time. Also, just a couple of other things. I wanted to let you know about two yoga retreats that I have coming up. One from April 20th to 22nd at Lotus Heart Center in Brighton, Ontario. And the other one is Flourish Fest from May 18th to 20th in 2012 at Castletown Westmeath um, in Ireland. And uh, I will be there in May, so looking forward to that. Okay, and of course you can like us on Facebook at Your Namaste Yoga. Okay, so this is a beginner's class. I'm very excited about this. Our beginner's classes are, are very well viewed. Um, so, and people find, what I love about them is that what happens is people try a beginner's class and then they can do it. And then they realize, wow, there are hundreds of other videos available and I can also do all of them as well. So this is a nice, gentle, uh, slow class. And so don't let the beginner title throw you off either. It's, it's a great class for everybody. So let me just tell you a little bit about how the class will go. We usually start lying down on our backs and we do some gentle stretches to prepare our bodies for the rest of the class, um, to prepare ourselves for the bigger poses that we will be doing and we won't be doing anything crazy here. Uh, but we always pride ourselves in doing real yoga for real people. Then we 
start to make our way up, continue to do more preparatory poses for our, our uh, peak poses. When we come to standing, and then we come back down, do some back bends, small back bends, doable back bends, twists, forward folds, and then it's um, down for Shavasana. So the whole thing goes in kind of a circle. You always want to work within your own limitations and abilities and really honor your body. It's really super important. Okay, so you can go ahead and lie down on your back and I'm going to take you through a guided relaxation. So you may want to just check in and see if your low back feels a little tender or vulnerable. Then you could put, uh, you could bend your knees and place your feet flat on the floor. Okay, so as you lie down on your back, just begin by closing your eyes and tune into your breathing. And without trying to change your breath or make your breath different in any way, just notice how your breathing is happening right now in this moment. So there are many w different ways that you could be experiencing your breath. Maybe you're feeling your breath moving in through your body as you breathe. Maybe it's moving down your spine. Maybe you're feeling it in a linear way, moving straight into your body, straight out of your body from your nose. Maybe you're feeling it like a path. Maybe you're feeling your breath more three-dimensionally, that you're feeling your torso expand in all directions as you breathe. And perhaps you're feeling your breath more predominantly in a certain part of your body. Maybe in your chest, maybe at your nose, maybe in your belly, maybe in your back body, maybe at your sides. So there's no right or wrong or better best way to be breathing, but just to bring awareness to the way that you are breathing in this moment. And now bring your awareness to your physical body and its connection to the ground underneath you. So feel all the parts of your body that are touching the ground. The back of your head, your shoulders, your rib cage, the back of your pelvis, your legs, your heels or your feet. And now become particularly aware of your legs. Feel how they're resting against the ground. 
and also feel how they're sitting in your pelvis. And then let your awareness travel into your pelvis. Feeling your sacrum at the back, that large triangular bony shaped structure at the back. And maybe even as you've brought your awareness down into your pelvis, you might start to feel breath movement all the way down here. Maybe at the back of your pelvis as the two sides of your pelvis gently move away from your sacrum as you breathe in and as they move back in towards your sacrum as you breathe out. Maybe you'll feel your sacrum press a little more deeply against the ground as you breathe in. Maybe it lifts off a little bit as you breathe out. Maybe the awareness is more at the front of your pelvis, at your low belly, as the softness of your lower abdominal wall rises as you breathe in and falls as you breathe out. So take a deep breath in through your nose and let it fall out of your mouth. And now just bring to mind your life circumstances right now. All the things that are going on in your life. Your health, your friends, your family, your work, your play, your hobbies. This is the general way that your days are going right now. So given all of that and the way your body feels and the way you're experiencing your breath in your body, start to set an intention for how you could best honor your body in this practice right now. And we'll call this setting an intention. In yoga, we call this a sankalpa. So set an intention for your yoga practice of how this practice could best serve you in your life right now. And then once you've set your intention, you can start to wiggle and stretch out a little bit. You're gonna stay lying on your back and if your knees aren't already bent, you're going to bend your knees and take your feet wide on the mat. So the way that I like to do it, let me just adjust my mic a bit here. So the way that I like to do it so that I still have the grip of my mat is to place my feet half on the mat and half off the mat. It seems to work pretty well. And then you can take your hands out to the side. And you're just going to start by swaying your knees from side to side. And make sure you're breathing while you do this. Okay, and then the next time you sway your knees to the left, you're going to reach forward through your right hip. So you get a stretch through the front of your right hip. I should have done that the other way so you can see better. So let me do that the other way. So the next time you sway your knees to the right, you're gonna reach forward through your left hip. So you're gonna feel stretch the front of your left hip and down through your left quad, okay? And I want you to tune into your own experience and see what feels right for you to move on and go back to the other side, okay? So it felt like it was time for me to switch sides. So I'm gonna move sides and reach forward through my right hip here. So 
So just pay attention and listen to your own body and see when it's ready to move to the other side. And you can also be curious about what it is that motivates you to change sides. I don't think I'm going to give these pants back to Donna. <laughs> I really like them. <laughs> Maybe I will. Maybe I'll exchange them for the ones with the print on the bottom. <laughs> Okay, and then um, come back to the center and you're going to slowly roll over onto your stomach. So I'm just going to have to set up my mic here. You're going to lie on your stomach. Oh, I've got stuff on my pants. Okay. Okay, you're going to lie on your stomach, and the first thing that we're going to do is lengthen your low back. Oh, and I can see my necklaces <laughs> banging my mic, which will irritate everybody. So let me just take that out. So you can start just by wiggling your hips from side to side to create some space in your low back. Okay, and then what we're going to do is really simple and it's a really nice tool to lengthen your low back. You're going to tuck your left toes under, lift your left knee, and then reach back through your left heel and lower your leg down. This leg should feel longer and should feel like there's more space in your low back. And then you're going to do the same thing on the other side. So tuck your right leg under, reach back through your heel, lift your knee, lengthen. Okay, so now your low back should be really long. And then we're going to bend your left leg in. And you're going to reach around and hold on to your left ankle or your left foot and stretch out the front of your left leg. So some of you might not be able to reach this and you could use a yoga strap around your foot or a band or a belt just to hold your, to hold your foot here. Okay, and then release that. And let's do the same thing on the other side. So you can bend your right leg in, reach around and hold on to your right ankle or your right foot. And draw your heel towards your buttocks. You don't have to touch it. What you're, it doesn't matter how far you come into pose, it matters the experience you're having in the pose. So the experience that you're going for here in the pose is a stretch in the front of your leg. So if that's happening, that's all we need to have happening. So good. <laughs> Okay. 
Okay, and then release that. And we're going to do uh, another exercise. So just wiggle your hips from side to side. Check in and make sure your low back's long. Press the front of your pelvis into the ground and then lengthen long through your left leg till it reaches off the ground. So the intention here is to open up the front of your left hip. So it doesn't matter how high your leg is, just matters that you're getting that lengthening through your leg and opening through the front of your left hip. And then lower that down and switch sides and we'll do the other side. And then slowly lower that down. You can take your hands and your shoulders. Push yourself up onto all fours. Sit back on your heels and stretch your low back. This is called child's pose. And if this doesn't work in your body, because for a lot of people this is a really hard position for your knees, then you can do um, the same position on your back. So you lie on your back and hug your knees into your chest. Okay, so you're gonna make your way back onto your stomach. And we're gonna work your upper back here. So you're gonna place your hands underneath your shoulders. Let's do that low back lengthening again. Tuck your toe under, reach back through your heel. Tuck your right toe under, lift your knee, reach back through your heel. Okay, hands are under your shoulders, roll your shoulders back and up, press the front of your pelvis into the ground, you're gonna inhale, lift your chest up off the ground, and exhale, lower down. Keep your chin tucked here. So we're trying to move the part of your back that's connected to your rib cage, your thoracic spine. So it doesn't matter how high you come. It just matters what feels good in your body today. And try and use your back muscles more than pushing through your hands. Keep your shoulders down and relaxed. Let's do one more. Okay, and then you can either push up and back into child's pose or come onto your uh, back and hug your knees into your chest. Okay, we're gonna come back down onto your stomachs one more time. This is almost it on your stomach, okay? Actually, being on your stomach is so good for a lot of reasons. It presses on all your abdominal organs and it massages them really good for you and it's very grounding and calming for your body too. So it's good to spend time on your stomach, very relaxing. 
Okay, I'm hoping I have enough room to pull this off here. You're gonna have your arms straight in front of you. And let's start with bending your left knee in. Reach around and hold on to your left ankle if you can reach your foot, if not. Um, you can e sometimes it's easier to hold the inside of your foot as well. Okay, you're gonna roll your shoulder back and up, tuck your tailbone under, pull your heel away from your buttocks to lift your chest up off the ground. Keep your chin tucked. Okay, and then you can slowly lower down. And remember, you can come out of the pose anytime you need to. You don't have to feel like you have to stay in as long as me, or you can come stay in longer if you want to, too. Listen to your own body. Wiggle your hips from side to side. Okay, tuck your tailbone under again. Reach your left arm long in front of you. Bend your right leg. Reach around and hold on to your right ankle. Roll your right shoulder back and up. Keep your right arm straight. So the action of pulling your right heel away from your buttocks will lift your chest up off the ground. You can use your left hand for leverage here too. Okay, and then slowly lower yourself down. Take your hands under your shoulders. Push yourself up onto all fours. And sit back on your heels and stretch out your low back. Okay, now inhale up onto all fours. We're going to do cat pose. So spread your fingers nice and wide so that you take the weight out of your wrists and bring it into the webs of your hands. If it bothers your wrist, you can always come up onto fists or even come down onto your forearms, okay? Whatever works best in your body. And then you're going to exhale and round up through your back. And inhale and arch through your back. Okay, and then you're gonna inhale, open your left arm out to the side. Bring your left arm through so you, uh, between the space between your right wrist and your right knee, place your left shoulder on the ground, rest the left side of your head on the ground. So you're stretching out your left shoulder. Keep the back of your neck long so you wanna tuck your chin a bit here.
And then come back to the center. And we'll do that on the other side. So inhale, open your right arm out to the side. Reach your right arm between the space between your left wrist and your left knee. Lower your right shoulder to the ground, the right side of your head to the ground, and tuck your chin so the back of your neck is long. Okay, and then come back to the center. And we're gonna do some lunging now to stretch out the fronts of your hips, okay? So let's start with, I'm gonna turn this way just because I can look at you better then. <laughs> I'm going to start by st stepping your left leg forward through, okay? Actually, let's just take another moment to set up our mats for ourselves here. Um, you can either put a rolled up blanket or something underneath your knees here would be really good so that you've got supporting underneath your knees um, because we're going to be here for a little bit. Okay, so you've got your left leg through. You're going to sink down through your front left foot and come upright. Okay, so balance can be an issue here. So if it is, then you just take your left leg out a little bit so that you widen your stance okay and then you're going to keep your tailbone tucked under here and reach forward through your front of your right hip so to deepen this you're going to reach your right arm straight up really reach up through your right fingertips and then all those special connections here will cause the opening of your right hip Okay, and then lower your right arm down, and you're going to turn towards your left leg, take your right elbow towards the outside of your right leg, and bring your palms together in prayer position here. So let me just show you on the other side what that looks like. So, you, so that's going to look like that. Okay. Okay, so the idea here is to be stretching this part of your back. And then come back to the center. Okay, and um, we're going to switch sides. So step your left leg back, and you can step your right leg through. Okay, so sink down through your front right foot, tuck your tailbone under, and you're going to come upright again. Reach forward through your pelvis. Remember, you can move your right leg out if you need more help with balance. And then you're going to lift your left arm up and really reach up to open up the front of your left hip. Then take, turn towards your right leg, take your left elbow towards the outside of your right knee, turn your torso, bring your palms together. If you keep your right elbow up, it really helps to give you leverage here and balance. Okay, 
and come back to the center. Going to come onto all fours. Spread your fingers nice and wide. I'm just rolling up my mat here to get more sticky. You tuck your toes under. You're gonna lift your hips up towards the ceiling and lengthen out your back here. Now, see how I've got my knees so bent and my heels off the ground? If you've got tight hamstrings, you can do this. What I would like more is sit bones up towards the ceiling and a long spine. And then you can work towards straightening your legs. Okay, so we don't wanna have a really rounded back. I think my mic's maybe gonna stay, okay. <laughs> And if you have, if this is really hard for your wrists or you don't have enough strength for this, you can always do this against the wall where you put your hands on the wall and then you reach your hips back away from the wall. Okay, so we're gonna come up to standing. Okay, from standing, you're gonna stand with your feet underneath your hip bones. Lift and spread your toes. Your inner edges of your feet, you want them to be parallel. Reach your legs down into the ground. You want your pelvis to be level, so that means that your hip bone, your hip bone, and your pubic bone are on the same level. And then roll your shoulders back and down, lengthen up tall through your spine. Inhale, take your arms overhead. You're gonna exhale, side bend. Inhale, center, and exhale, side bend, and inhale, center. Okay, so we're doing two things as we do the standing half moon pose. One thing is the side bend is helping to loosen up our spine. The other thing is that as you bend to the right, you can reach down through your left leg and start to feel an opening in the front of your left hip, okay? So this is our intention in this pose. It's not usually the intention in this pose, so don't go to yoga class and tell your other teacher that that's what you're supposed to be doing here. It's what we're trying to do. And in order to do that, you're gonna really need to move your left shoulder back too, okay? Keep your navel pulled back to your spine, your pelvic floor lifted so that you're supporting your core. Reach down through that leg so you can feel an opening in the front of your hip too, okay? That might mean pausing and staying on that side a little bit longer. And also reaching out through straight arms a little bit more too. Let's just do one more of those. Okay, good. So now is a good idea to find a wall that you can hold onto or a piece of furniture. So I'm gonna have to balance. <laughs> so you're going to stand on your right leg, bend your left knee, reach around and hold on to your left ankle. And the intention here is to stretch out the front of your left leg again, just like you did when you were lying down. Okay, so bring your, yeah, bring your, I'm gonna have to hold on to something. The other way, okay. Bring your left knee in. So the tendency here is for, really need to search something this way. So the tendency here is for legs to splay out to the side. You wanna try and bring your leg in, okay? And as much as you can, drop your knee straight to the ground. But you do wanna be feeling the stretch in the belly of your leg muscle. So if you're feeling it in your knee, you need to back off. Okay, 
Okay, so let's do this on the other side. So here you're going to bend your... <laughs> now, I'm sure when I started I was mirroring you, so I'm just going to say other leg. I'm not sure which one you're on now. <laughs> bend your other leg. <laughs> Hold on to your ankle. Okay, tuck your tailbone under. Open up through the front of your hip. Keep your leg in tight to your midline. Keep drawing your navel back to your spine. The intention here is to stretch the front of your leg. Okay, great. Now you're going to stand towards the front of your mat. You're going to take a, a big step back with your left foot. Let's start with that. Okay. And your left toe is going to be on a 45 degree angle in. As much as you can, you're going to turn your hips forward so they face the front edge of your mat. Then you're going to sink down through your front right sit bone. Tuck your tailbone under so you're opening up the front of your left hip. Okay. It could be easier for your knee to come right up on your toe here. In fact, let's just do that. because let's, let's make this a beginner class, and it works better for what we're doing here too, because it gets you into your hip. Then, you're going to roll your shoulders back and down, interlace your fingers behind your back, and open up your chest. Now, if you're having trouble balancing here, you can take your right foot out wider. Okay, so you widen your stance again. and then release and find a way out of this pose and then stand back towards the front of your mat and this time you'll take a generous step back with your right foot okay so what we're going to do is come right up on your right the ball of your right foot reach tuck your tailbone under Sink down through your front left sit bone. So your back leg is straight, your front leg is bent. Roll your shoulders back and down. Interlace your fingers behind your back and open up through your chest. So maybe less here for your chest if this is a lot in your shoulders would be to put your hands on your hips and draw your elbows back. Okay, and then go ahead and let this posture out of your body. Okay, and then now we're going to do uh, the pose that we've been, we've been working towards. It's called Natarajasana, dancer pose. And I would recommend, this is a balancing pose, but I would recommend that if balance is an issue at all for you, that you could hold on to a wall for this one. Okay, so you're going to stand on your right leg bend your left knee, reach around and hold on to your right foot or your ankle. Okay, tuck your tailbone under, roll your right shoulder back and down, keep your right arm straight. You're going to start to move your right heel away from your buttocks and that will start to pull your shoulder back and open up your chest creating a little back bend here. Watch your right, sorry, watch your left knee, keep it in towards your midline. and then release and let's do this on the other side so you'll stand on your left leg bend your right knee reach around and hold on to your right ankle or your right foot hold on to the wall with your left hand if you need to 
Roll your right shoulder back and down, tuck your tailbone under, keep your low back long, keep your right arm straight, pull your heel away, and that will start to pull your arm back. and then release all right so to counter pose for this we're going to do a standing forward fold this can be really challenging for beginners because it tends to be when you first start doing yoga and for a long time after that too <laughs> your hamstrings are quite tight so let me give you a few options what you want to do in this pose is roll your hip bones over your leg bones okay so when you're just starting, you won't be able to do this very far. So the pose looks something like this. You'll drop your head, but for beginners, it's a really good idea to bend your knees a lot. And it's even a good idea to bring your elbows up onto your legs here. So the whole idea here is that your head is below your heart. So as long as that's happening, could even be that you're going to sit in a chair here. That's a really nice way to do this, actually. If you sit in a chair, you can kind of imagine that and then let your body hang forward. It's really nice like that, too. Okay, and then you're going to come back up to standing. Okay, and we're going to do that Natarajasana pose again. Are we almost out of time? Yeah, okay, so we're not going to do it again. <laughs> we're actually going to come and sit down so that we can do a little twist for our backs after doing that back bend. Okay, so sit down on your mats. Bend your right leg in. Wrap your left arm around your right leg. Turn towards it. Take your right hand to the base of your spine and turn towards it. You want to keep your spine straight up and down here. And here, make room for your body so your foot can be out from your leg. And it doesn't have to be right into your sit bone either. Make it work in your body. And then come back to the center. Extend your right leg out. Bend your left leg in. Reach around with your right arm. Turn towards your left leg. Take your left hand to the base of your spine. Lengthen up through your spine. Okay, and then come back to the center. Okay, so now you want to take some time, about five to ten minutes, to rest back just like you did at the beginning in Shavasana. And uh, with your palms turned up and your legs out long, maybe your knees bent and your feet flat on the floor. And this is really important to take this Shavasana at the end of the class because it gives your body a chance to integrate and receive the practice. So please be sure that you do this. 
The only reason why we don't do it is because we don't have long enough tape to do it. <laughs> we run out of tape. So once we get our new video camera without the tape, we'll be able to film that. <laughs> okay. So, oh, actually it's not why. It has to do with HD and file compression and everything. Yes, that's why. <laughs> okay, so you are responsible for your own Shavasana. Lying takes a little time for relaxation before you integrate back into your day-to-day -day life. Okay, bring your hands to, I, well, I'm going to bring my hands to my heart center and say namaste to you. Congratulations, you finished this beginner's class. And if you like this, we have so many others. If you got through this, honestly, you can get through any other of my yoga classes pretty much. So just go and take a look at all of them, see which one appeals to you and try them out. So thanks so much for joining us and I will see you next week.